Good day, YouTubers. So today I'm going to do a video on troubleshooting two-stroke engines that won't start. Um, now this is primarily based on ones that won't start, but it also applies to hard starting. So now the first thing that if your chainsaw, for instance, was working yesterday, you did hell a lot of wood, blah blah blah, and it won't start now. First thing besides obviously checking you got fuel in your tank. Oh, that sort of thing is spark. Do I have spark? Now, you might say, how the hell do I test if I have spark? Well, that, my friend, is a very, very easy, 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 easy thing to do. So first of all, what you do is you get your spark plug spanner, such as this, and take your spark plug out. So now, this is going through the sequence, providing that. Yes, you've tried starting it, that sort of thing. You've let it sit. You've, you know, done the correct starting procedure. So this is, you know, definitely not starting situation. So first of all, what we'll do is pop our spark plug out, which in this case is in a prick of a spot. So now inspect your spark plug. You'll see this one's beautiful and clean. Now, when they're not beautiful and clean, you'll find a lot of carbon in the areas surrounding if I can get something to draw an example with in these areas here that are around the edges of spark plug so anyway what we'll do is we'll hook that up so that it's sitting on a grounded surface of the engine make sure it's sitting on a good grounded surface make sure your ignition is on the run position and we'll give it a good pull over see if we've got spark Make, it, make sure you can see that. Now in this particular case, yes, we have spark. No go. No great. That's good news for us. So now we've ascertained we have spark. Um, generally, you need a good spark. In a small engine, you can try replacing the spark plug, put back in. Sometimes like under compression or outside the engine, spark plug will seem fine, but when under compression it won't fire properly. So if you want to replace your spark plug, go ahead. Um, never hurts, no matter what you're doing, but I never bother, really, unless it's really not running. So, now next thing after spark, you've made sure you've had spark. So now we need to make sure we have fuel delivery. So fuel delivery, obviously make sure you've got fuel in your tank. Um, but the next thing people overlook is sometimes if you have a steel can, a steel jerry can, um, it'll rust and all the rust particles will end up in your fuel and they'll block up your fuel filter in your tank. Now this one's pretty good, but there's no real visual way to inspect them. So what you can do if you want is you can take that off and blow it off or do whatever the hell you want to do. Make sure that it's getting fuel through. Now I know this one will be because I know what my problem is here, I can tell you already, but we'll go through the troubleshooting procedure. So now, we know that this has fuel in the tank and the fuel filter is submerged in fuel, so it's got fuel pickup. So the next thing we'll do is not jump to a conclusion that it's totally stuffed, take to the service ma'am. We're going to take our air filter off. So, it's a fairly easy procedure as long as you have a decent screwdriver, which I don't, but anyway. So the next thing we're going to do um, is inspect that at least we've got some sort of fuel flow. Now, this is probably my problem here, I'd say. Um, the fuel line <laughs> has disintegrated. But anyway, we'll get to that later. So now, make sure that your filter is in good condition, so on and such forth. So. You can try starting it with the filter off if you want, see if that works, but it's definitely not going to work in this case because as you can see, fuel line's rotten. So anyway, um, now the next thing you can do to check if you've got fuel or check if the engine's going to fire is tip a tiny bit of petrol down the throat of the carburetor. Now make sure you hold the throttle open and the chokes open when you do this. So I'll do that. Alright, so what I've done now is I've got a small quantity of two-stroke fuel spark plugs reinstalled, everything's reinstalled so what I'll do is carefully try not to spill it anywhere else, tip a bit of fuel down the throat of the carburetor now I did spill a considerable amount but 
considering the way this thing's set up, it's hard not to. So anyway, now I've got my fuel down there. What I'll do is with the engine in the run position, I'll just give it a whirl. We'll see if it'll kick over. Alright, so it kicked over then, but I stopped it because there's people trying to sleep. So anyway, now we can tell that we have spark and that the timing is right. So we've got spark and we've got timing. We'll assume our compression and place. So the engine's in good condition. So what we're now leaning to is there's the timing. We've got timing because it fired and run. If we did, if it didn't fire and run, then we wouldn't have very good. Well, it's indication we don't have proper timing. So anyway, now what we've got, we've narrowed it down to fuel. So it only runs when I tip fuel down there physically. So we now know that it's a f fuel related issue. So if it hadn't have run then, then it would have pointed to a timing issue because if the spark, if the fuel piston and spark are not synchronized, then it will not fire. So you need um, the piston to be at the top of the cylinder when the spark fires to um, push the piston down. If it isn't firing at the right second, the spark plug isn't sparking at the right second, then your timing's out and the engine won't run. So we'll go through resetting timing in another video. Now, the other thing to check if it won't run is your exhaust. A lot of people overlook this, but if your exhaust is blocked, your engine, I can guarantee you it will not run because when there's that much back pressure that the, um, that the, you know, the, you can't exhaust the burnt gas and it's just not going to run. Um, that happens to a lot of two strokes or any engine that's stored over a period of time. Little wasps get in there and lay that sort of concretey type shit in there and that'll stop her from firing. Same thing happens in air filters as well. So anyway, as you can see here we've got perish fuel lines. Now that will lead to what we would call vacuum leak. So there's not a vacuum from the tank to the carburetor to suck fuel through. So you'll look for fuel lines with spits in them if you're not getting fuel to your carburetor, which was our problem. Now if you know you're getting fuel to your carburetor so there's no splits in the lines or that sort of thing, then we'd assume that the carburetor itself is crook, which is again another video. So now what I've got to do is either try and rejoin that fuel line there, which if I used a joiner I might be able to do. Hmm. No, I can't. So what I'm going to have to do is take this whole saw apart to reconnect this fuel line. So I'll do that. Um, but anyway, that's basically the procedure in um, troubleshooted two strokes. So you narrowed it down to spark works because we had spark and because it fired we've got that will tell us we've got decent spark we've got compression our play and tolerances don't come into this um, equation because it's the engine was running yesterday so these these things here are things that will happen over a long time your engine will get progressively worse and worse if your compression's getting low the play in the bearings that sort of thing is not right and your tolerance has a worn and they're things that in a over a period of maybe a year will cause the engine to stop running so we can cross them off our list so the main thing I'd say is check your spark then check your fuel your timing um, if you've got spark or well, if the engine will run when you tip fuel down then you've got good timing um, check your exhaust so that's basically how to how to troubleshoot a two-stroke engine. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to take the carby part and rebuild that. That will be our next video.